So in this video, I'm basically doing what I do in every video. It's a continuation of the previous videos and I'm just building off of it, trying to piece together the puzzle that the media and everything else has given us. And it's in regards to Super Bowl 51. There seems to be a huge connection in regards to the Jesuits and Pope Francis who his 1,189th day as being the Pope was on Donald Trump's 70th birthday. Falcons equal 70 in Gematria. And of course there's 1,189 chapters in the King James Bible. Donald J. Trump equals 1,189 in Gematria. He of David equals 1,189 in Gematria. And, you know, I'm talking about Francis Scott Key. It sounds a lot like Francis Scott Key. You know, the key of David is mentioned in Philadelphia. In regards to Philadelphia and the book of Revelation, Pope Francis finished his trip last year in the United States on the Jesuit order's anniversary of being the Jesuit order, and he's supposedly the first Jesuit pope. There seems to be a big Catholic slash Jesuit theme that is possibly going along with the Super Bowl. So, and... I've gotten a lot of help from other people in comments and whatnot, so I'm sorry if I don't use other people sometimes, it's just sometimes when a comment clicks, you know, I go off of it. And hopefully other people are just, I don't care if you credit me or anything, just take my information for what it is and build off of it for yourself, you know. It doesn't matter to me, I don't need, whatever, I don't need the credit for finding the information, just... I just want people to figure out this puzzle and whatnot. So, anyway, I got this message in regards to the Beatles and the Mannequin Challenge. And what he's talking about in regards to the, the Black Beatles is the Beatles have a song called Black Bird. And, of course, the Beatles, or, of course, a Black Bird reminds us of the Falcon logo and the Falcons and whatnot. And, of course, I talked about Black Bird in regards to Charlie Manson, who we just got a story about, Charlie Manson as well, being sick in the hospital. But his helter-skelter theory was basically that the Black Bird, the Beatles song, was telling blacks to rise up and overthrow the white people and everything else. So there's a definite connection in regards to the Beatles and the White Album and... In this mannequin challenge, the song that they use is called Black Beatles. And he didn't post it in here, but I know I read one of his comments somewhere. Maybe it was on my blog or Zachary K. Hubbard's blog. But he said, if you take out the ATL, like Atlanta, all you're left with in Beatles is bees. And if you've followed what I've said in regards to the Miami Dolphins and Dan Marino, and my name was Dan, and there was a whole bunch of Dan symbolism, the Falcons coach, named Dan Quinn, and I talked about the tribe of Dan and Daniel on the lion's den, but the tribe of Dan also had Samson, who killed the lion with his bare hands, and then the bees swarmed it or whatever, so just interesting how it connects back to that. I even, a long time ago, I researched a lot of that, and like Samson had, it was super connected to the movie Half-Baked, because, you know, Samson is whatever. Samson's where he gets his weed and whatnot. But anyway, like, Rastafariism is all about, you know, they believe they're the true children of Israel. And Samson's hair, like, gave him the power. And he had the dreadlocks. And it was, like, the mane of the lion. So, I don't know. I need to think about that a little bit more and piece it together in my head. But just wanted to bring it up that it was connected to some of the things that I was thinking about and talking about. And even, even the latest episode of Family Guy, and the last one to come out before the Super Bowl, is called the Grand Cosbys. Cosbys, right? And Peter gets this drone, and then a hawk comes in and rapes the drone, and then the drone says that it likes it or whatever. So, just interesting. It's a hawk, and when you think of Atlanta, you think of the Falcons, the hawks. And then later in this episode, Stewie gives bees steroids, and then they chase uh, Rob Gronkowski out of town or whatever. So it's just an interesting connection in regards to bees yet again and how it syncs up. If you followed my channel for 
like a, a year or so. I've talked a lot about how there's a huge connection to some judge slash law theme as well. And then, you know, Donald Trump even just nominated his, the Supreme Court justice guy. Can't think of his name or can't pronounce it. But regardless, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's still interrelated, trying to piece it all together as to what exactly the the whole point and the whole moral of the story is with it. But there's definitely a law theme that's connected into this as well. You know, the tribe of Dan is the judges and whatnot. So anyway, what he's referring to in this post, he says Jesuit Pope, Pope Francis, the first Jesuit Pope, uh, Jesuit president, Donald Trump went to Fordham University, a Jesuit university, Matt Ryan, the Falcons quarterback, went to Boston College, a Jesuit university. The Falcons owner was born on 927, which is the anniversary of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. Lady Gaga uh, went to a Catholic high school or whatever, and then red and black, reminding you of the Cardinals and everything else. So a big Jesuit theme, which I totally agree. And it's even connected to Christopher Columbus, which I think Christopher Columbus is a big piece to all the flat earth things that are going around. I mean, whatever. I don't care. I'm not here to argue with anybody about the flat earth. It really doesn't matter to me whatsoever. It's something that, to me, the only way that's going to get proved is if somebody builds a rocket and gets on it and they just start randomly keep shooting people up into space to prove if it's real or not, you know? How else can you truly prove that? Numerology and whatnot that's going on, we can completely prove that, you know? It's just something, it's not that it's not something to worry about, it's just that, to me, it's not something that I'm that concerned with right now because... There truly is no way to actually prove it without literally going to outer space for yourself and finding that out. So anyway, moral of the story, Christopher Columbus is connected to all of this as well and whatever. When you're a kid, I, or at least maybe in my school, I remember getting taught that Christopher Columbus and all them people thought the earth was flat and they might fall off the earth when he sailed west and whatnot. And now, when you look it up, it says that that wasn't the case. They all knew that the earth was round at the time and whatnot. But I remember distinctively as a kid learning that Christopher Columbus thought the earth was flat. And, you know, possibly some Mandela effect thing, but I can go ask all of my friends and I guarantee they'd tell you the same thing. Anyway, he was talking about Mannequin Challenge then, because that's a real big deal right now. And they use the song Blackbird. And Mannequin Challenge in Gematria equals 175, which is interesting because I've said how all of this is somehow related to my own personal life. My uncle died 175 days after his birthday, just before he got in a car wreck, just before Highway 175, where the high school team that plays there is the Falcons. Also, if you look up the Mannequin Challenge, it says the first, it started in Jacksonville on October 12th, 2016. If you followed what I said, 10-12 is super significant. It basically all started with, I noticed there was an article in regards to Gary Shandling, who died clear back in March, March 24th, which also just so happens to be the day that King James, the real King James, became the king and whatnot, but possibly I'll explain that later. But the number 318 kept coming up over and over and over. And I noticed that his death to Super Bowl 51 was a span of 318 days. The New Testament supposedly says that the second coming of Jesus, it, it's mentioned 318 times. The only time the number 318 is mentioned in the Bible even refers to Dan or whatever. Going as far as Dan, my uncle's birthday was three months, 18 days before my birthday. It's a number connected to backwards pi. Also, Prince Charles, who will become the king if Queen Elizabeth dies, was born on the 318th day of the year in a non-leap year. His wife, Princess Diana, died on 31 slash eight. It's just a number that kept popping up like crazy. And I noticed that 318 days was also 10 months, 12 days. And my uncle gave me this Dan Marino jersey, so I 
was following the story. I went back and looked at some of my old information. I talked about, like, Prince was super connected into a lot of it, the death of Prince the singer. And Dan Marino was on one episode ever of The Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror, or Prince died on Treehouse of Horror of The Simpsons, number 19, and Dan Marino was in Super Bowl 19, and it was the 215th episode, and Vanity died on 215. And when I looked up that episode again with Dan Marino, I realized it was season 10, episode 12 as well. So the 10-12, the Dolphins lost their first game of the season 10-12 to to the Seahawks. Dan Marino's last game that he won was against the Seahawks. whole bunch more. Houston clinched their division, winning 10-12 to against the Bengals. And the Dolphins were connected to the Bengals through the bullying scandal. I mean, it, it's really, really deep. That's why it's probably super confusing to anybody new. But I'll leave links in the description. If you truly want to understand what I'm saying, then you will watch the videos and or go to my blog and just try to read it and try to understand it. It's a lot to think about and a lot to re-explain. Anyway, Dan Marino also his birthday 10 months, 12 days before the Dolphins quarterback now, Ryan Tannehill. There was a whole bunch of 10-12 stuff, even connected to my family. My grandpa's birthday was 10-12. He was the dad of my uncle who died in London. And my uncle was a fourth degree Knights of Columbus, which made me think of Christopher Columbus. And when I looked up Christopher Columbus, I found out he discovered America, supposedly. You know, he truly didn't. That's just a stupid story you're told. But the date that they say that he discovered America was October 12th, 10, 12, 1492. And I'll explain more of that as we move here. So I looked up. The song, then, it's by this group right here, however you say it, Ray, whatever, not even going to try. But if you do it in Gematria, it equals 63. And once again, lots of 63 that's interrelated. My uncle died age 63. Talked about Muhammad Ali, who died on 6-3. The real Muhammad supposedly died at the age of 63. He died, Muhammad Ali died 63 days before the Rio Olympics. And... Of course, you know, he was the one who lit the Olympic torch in, or yeah, the Olympic torch in Atlanta in 1996. Also in regards to 63, the year 63 was the year that JFK was assassinated. JFK was the only Catholic president, right? So 1963 connects to the Jesuits, the Knights of Columbus, the Catholics. He was also the 35th president. If you write out Catholic, he equals 35. The only Catholic president was the 35th president. Hmm, you know. And also think about Christopher Columbus in regards to the Catholic Church. Christopher Columbus, CC, sees the third letter. So 33 sent by the Catholic Church, the CC, 33, the highest degree at Scottish Rite Freemasonry. King James was the King of Scotland as well. Also, in regards to Columbus, then, it says that the myth of him thinking the Earth was flat or whatever was made pop, made widely popular by Washington Irving. And what's funny is he's the guy who the New York Knicks are named after pretty much uh, because he started a hoax in the newspaper about a missing man named Diedrich Knickerbocker, and he did it all to promote his book. And basically it worked. He put all these hoax articles in the news saying this guy was missing, and then it was basically the guy in his book that he wrote and whatever, and he promoted his book by putting false news stories. So just think about that in regards to today and how it connects to all the fake news and everything else, you know. Just interesting, Washington Irving. It also, in regards to the, the national anthem and whatnot, it says... He was also among the first magazine editors to reprint Francis Scott Key's poem that later became the Star Spangled Banner. So, just interesting. Christopher Columbus's voyage was just after the end of the Moors. And that really puts in perspective what I've talked about in regards to Matt Moore, right? The Miami Dolphins quarterback who took over for Ryan Tannehill. And then we got the death of Mary Tyler Moore. Also, I talked about Dayton more. 
Dayton Moore was the guy who signed Jordano Ventura and Andy Marte. I think that was his first name, Marte. But he even signed Marte in Atlanta. There was a lot of, there was just more stuff going on. So interesting, Christopher Columbus, his voyage was just after the end of the Moors. And the people who financed him were Isabella I of Castile. And think about that in regards to the death of Philando Castile in Falcon Heights, Minnesota this year. You know, just interesting how it all interrelates. And there's a whole lot more in regards to her and whatnot and history that I need to look through. You know, just never taught all of this when you're a kid. You're taught the, the bare minimum of what is going on. And you're not actually told all of this other stuff that is seemingly important. If you understand history, you can understand what is to come, it seems. But basically, the reason I, I found it interesting was because her, her daughter, Isabella, and Ferdinand II's daughter was Catherine of Aragon. And she was married to Arthur Tudor, who was King Henry VII's first son. And then he died at the age of 15. And when Henry VII died, King Henry VIII decided to marry Catherine. So he married his dead brother's wife, basically, you know. And then there was a lot of problems involved or whatever, you know. And, of course, Henry VIII was the guy who basically separated England from the Catholic Church and started the Church of England because he wanted to get a divorce and the Pope wouldn't let him and whatnot. So, like I said, there's a lot of things that I need to relook up and, you know, relearn and also learn more in regards to history. But interesting how it all connects. King Henry VIII really is when they started the whole separation thing, you know. And basically it's all one and the same anyway, the way I see it. The separation was just to confuse people, just like they do now. They separated, you know, they made the Church of England, and then they said they were separate from the Catholics and whatnot. It just created division. It's just like how the Jesuits and the Freemasons are pretty much one and the same. Yes, they're technically different, but that's just what you're trained to believe, you know. I mean, just honestly, look up Pope Francis doing his hidden hand thing. And he's the first Jesuit Pope, you know, if... If you're Catholic, you're not supposed to be able to be a Freemason, but yet he's doing the Freemason hidden hand symbol. <laughs> I mean, it's all interrelated, you know? They're all, whatever you call it, infiltrated. It's all part of the plan to create division. Also, in regards to popes and the year that JFK died in 63, Pope John the Twenty Third died on 6-3 of 63, just before JFK was assassinated and whatnot. And then JFK met the new Pope just right after that on 7-2 of 63. 7-2, it has a date numerology of 72. If you watched a lot of my stuff in regards to the, a possible assassination attempt on uh, to Donald Trump, it was all about 72. President Trump equals 72. Actually, I'm going to pull it up and show you because I can't remember it all, but I'll pull up my blog post on it. So, President Trump equals 72, John Hinckley Jr. equals 72, and he was the one who tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan, and there was a lot of connections between Trump and Reagan, celebrity presidents and whatnot, but he tried to assassinate Reagan because of Arthur Brimmer, who tried to assassinate the 45th governor of Alabama, George Wallace, in the year 72. Think about Donald Trump being the 45th president. Also, William McKinley, an assassinated president, who was connected in the mix, his name equals 72. And I also talked about the 1948 election in regards to Donald Trump and how that was the year of the biggest election upset when Harry S. Truman won. Harry S. Truman, the only president to die age 88. Trump equals 88. But Harry S. Truman died in the year 72. I know there was more to it. I don't know. This is just one of the posts. But going to move on because I don't want to make this super duper long, but I know that 72 was an interesting number in regards to it seemingly an assassination attempt or the assassination of Donald Trump.
So this Pope, he dies 144 days before JFK is assassinated. And remember, JFK was the 44th term president. If you write out 44, it equals 144. So 144 days apart. Donald Trump's the 44th person to be the president. The first president ever to die in office, he died, William Henry Harrison died on 4-4. Four, four. He also died at the age of 68. Donald John Trump equals 68. A whole bunch more in regards to that. But JFK's brother, he died at 1.44 a.m. Kill equals 44. Martin Luther King Jr. died on 4-4. Four, four. Lots of examples in regards to death and the numbers 44 and 144. And you see how they're interrelated. Also in regards to William Henry Harrison, the first president to die in office, Harrison's were the first, he was the ninth president, and the other president whose name was Harris was like his relative or whatever. He was the 23rd. He was the one who broke up Grover Cleveland's consecutive terms or whatever. So the ninth and the 23rd, and just think about that in regards to all of the Pope Francis stuff I've mentioned. Coming to America on his 923rd day as being the Pope, going to the White House at 923, on 923. You know, he's also the 266th Pope. And if you take 1,189 and you add 266, or wait, if you take 923 and add 266, it equals 1,189. And the 266th day of the year is 923. So also, there's a big Falcon theme, you know, well, obviously, the Falcons in the Super Bowl. But if you look up more of the Falcons and you look up all of this other stuff, you have Ra and Horus, who were represented by having the Falcon head. And then think about, you know, they were the gods of Atlantis. And think about Atlanta, Atlantis. They were the pretty much the first and the last. There was another one like Pita. That was supposedly before Ra, but Ra was like the second one. They when they when you read articles about them, they include them like kind of together or whatever, like the first and the last that I've mentioned a whole lot. Anyway, Zach had a, a blog post in regards to the song Bad Romance, supposedly gonna be played at the Super Bowl during halftime. And in this video, you know, it's all red and black, tons of red and black, reminding us of the Falcons, reminding us of the Cardinals, the Jesuits, whatever. And he even wrote on his blog that said, you know, Gaga, right, in Georgia, the abbreviation is G-A, reminding us of Lady Gaga and whatnot. But in this video, she even does the, the Eye of Horus symbol. And then literally right after she does that, it goes back into the chorus like, ra, ra, la, 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 whatever, you know. They say ra, ra, and then she does the Eye of Horus symbol. And... It's basically the right eye of Horus, and it's supposedly supposed to represent the sun, right? And Ra was the sun god. So just interesting. And also, what's interesting about this, the symbol here, the eye of Horus, it's supposedly supposed to represent a falcon, right? Because he has the head of a falcon. So that's what she's doing right here. She's doing a falcon thing. That's why she's doing the halftime show, and that's why the falcons are in the Super Bowl. I guarantee it. Let's see, this is right here. This is the Eye of Horus. It supposedly represents a, the Eye of a Falcon, and this is the Teardrop. I've also talked a whole lot about how there is a big moon space theme. You know, and then we just got the death of Eugene Cernan, the last guy to walk on the moon. The first and the last. I talked about the death of Prince on The Simpsons and re, with Neil Armstrong. And then now we got the death of Eugene Cernan, the last guy to walk on the moon. And... Basically, so Horus's right eye is supposed to represent the sun or Ra, and his left eye was the one that was ripped out by Set, and that's supposed to represent the moon or Thoth. And just think about that in regards to the moon symbolism and whatnot. Horus's left eye getting ripped out. Lisa Left Eye Lopez married to Andre Risen. Rise up. Andre Risen born on 318, March 18th. Remember how that's supposedly. All that is connected to the Jesus symbolism. And then, of course, all these people, they signify Horus with Jesus. So just think about that in regards to Falcons, 
all the Jesus symbolism, the Falcons in the Super Bowl. And just do research for yourself. Look up Jesus is the moon God, and you'll find a whole bunch of information as well on that, whether it's true or not, you know. There's people talking about it. So interesting, all the moon symbolism and whatnot. Also, you know, think about Thoth and the Hermetic Order and Hermes Trismegistus. You know, he's supposedly the combination of Hermes and Thoth, right? So there's a lot more to talk about with it, but just pointing it out. And then how it connects to the Falcons and whatnot. Like I said, if you look up Ra, or look up the gods of Atlantis, these are the, the gods of Atlantis. So whatever, Pita and Ra, and then Horus was the last one. So Horus, I guess, was a god more than once. So just interesting, I guess. Like I said, the first and the last, or pretty much the first and the last, not necessarily. But up here it even says that it begins with, yeah, he follows this with a list of the reigns of the gods starting with Pita and Ra and ending with Horus. So just interesting that they mark them together, you know. In the Lady Gaga, in the Lady Gaga interview, she even says that in one of the verses on Bad Romance, she was watching a bunch of Alfred Hitchcock films on the, the line, I want your psycho, your vertigo stick. Want you in my rear window, baby, you're sick. She was listening to Alfred Hitchcock. And right, we just got the story of all of the birds flying in Houston. And it reminded us of the film, The Birds, the Alfred Hitchcock film. So how interesting in regards to that, that that would even be mentioned in there, you know? The birds equal 40 in Gematria. Atlanta Falcons equal 40 in Gematria. Also in regards to Set ripping out Horus's eye, if you read through here, it says that Set was the lord of the red desert where he was the balance to Horus. Roll as the lord of the black soil land, right? The red and the black. Once again, reminding us of the Jesuits, the Cardinals. You know, the Falcons, the red and the black. And that's probably why Dan Marino's Super Bowl 19 being in Stanford Stadium and all the Andrew Luck stuff was so important. Andrew Luck going to college at Stanford. Andrew Luck even equals 40 like Atlanta Falcons. The big way equals 112 like Matt Ryan, like Houston. So hopefully that makes sense. I just wanted to point out, I really think that this might be a very big theme that is going on with the Super Bowl in regards to the Falcons. It's all connected to Atlantis and Ra and Horus and the Falcon. Just interesting. I never thought about the flat earth stuff until just recently in regards to Christopher Columbus supposedly discovering America and the Patriots are America's team. And so whatever. I'm going to leave it at that. I totally, hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll get to this video tonight. I really want to make this video. Maybe I'll just make it next and then I'll talk about the WWF stuff. Because the Simpsons one is, I mean, it truly really shows you how the Falcons and the Patriots were totally supposed to be in the Super Bowl. So, anyway, peace.